Thresholding is probably one of the most common tasks in image analysis. In most cases in analyzing images, one wants to separate out objects of interest or foreground versus background. For example, choosing cells versus background. Thresholding an image is essentially choosing a cutoff value, delineating, delineating your objects from your non-objects or your background. So let's switch back to Fiji. And this is where we left off in our last step, the pre-processing step. So this is our Gaussian filtered image. So now we're going to actually, the first thing we'll do again is duplicate this image and then work on the duplicate. So to set a threshold, you can go to image, adjust, and threshold. Or you can just type threshold in the search bar. So here you can see you can manually adjust uh, your threshold. But this really isn't an ideal way of doing things. Um, it's better to use an auto thresholding method for reproducibility's sake. Because here you can see you could introduce bias. And if you threshold each image in your analysis differently, well, that's not reproducible at all. So you want to use an auto method. So there are a, a bunch of different algorithms that can be applied to choose this cutoff value. But which one do we know is best for our particular image? Well, we can run um, an auto threshold tool. And this guy will try out all these different methods and show you a preview there. So then you can see which one works well and which ones don't. You can zoom in and out by hitting the plus or minus key in your screen. And they're all labeled. Um, below so you can see which one is which. Now in general, Atsu is a great um, one to choose for nuclei and the default uh, method is based on Atsu. So basically going back to why are we using auto threshold methods? Well, we want to use that when possible because it's most, most reproducible. In short, auto threshold methods select a threshold based on the distribution of intensities in your image. So if the distribution changes, then the threshold will change too. So this is also a word of caution for that. You can bias your measurements even with auto thresholding when using the same signal for detecting an area that you are when measuring intensities. So just like having an actin layer in your western blots, you need something that does not change in your data to measure the other signal that is changing accurately. Setting thresholds on the same channel as those you wish to measure will actually lessen the potential variations you can observe. So always try and select your objects on a signal that you know is probably consistent and not going to change between conditions that you're measuring. So once we find a threshold we're happy with, and in our case we're going to use the default method, which again is based on Atsu, we're going to go ahead and create a mask. So in the search bar you just type create mask, run that guy, and now we have our binary image for the next step.